Hello fellow EverQuest players and uh, welcome to another a video in the series that, I, that I'm calling Guide and Showcase for the EC server. Um, this, is, this will be part 4 and uh, for this video the plan is to show you the next tier. Uh, if you haven't seen part two, 1, 2 and 3 yet, I suggest you do that first because this will build up upon uh, what I've already shown and talked about in the previous videos. Um, so the last video we uh, um, I made, we went through uh, the first four tiers uh, of the EC server. And uh, in this video, my plan is to show at least the next tier, tier 5, called the Abyss. And I will also explain how the custom spells work uh, on our server. Uh, which can be a bit intricate because uh, there are a few different ways of acquiring spells. So more about that um, and tier 5 as well. Um, so um, we'll start by doing something that... Um, um, I think my first video I was explaining to you um, how you could train your uh, weapon skills and casting skills. Uh, on the um, on the practice dummy that I'm uh, pointing at over here, uh, but I was made aware uh, I was made aware of the fact that you cannot it doesn't really work as it should right now this uh, practice dummy over here. Uh, so um, what you need to do is you need to if you want to practice your melee uh, skills or your casting skills. You should pay a visit to the to the defense dummies down here, and uh, they should increase your uh, skills. Um, so I just wanted to make you aware of that, so um, you don't try and you know max your skills using the the dummy over here. Uh, oh come on! Why am I? S oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> stuck in the water. Come on, give me a break here. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh well um, <clears throat> so yeah you, I was made aware that you cannot uh, increase your skills by uh, by hitting this uh, practice dummy here so uh, what you need to do is you need to just go over here to, to these guys the defense dummies and you have to whack them so that should work I can see there's already someone here uh, working on their skills uh, so yeah, I just want to mention that since I, I, I told you otherwise in the first video I made. So now you know uh, that's the proper way of practicing your skills, casting and uh, melee skills. Uh, and there is also one more thing that I added because I made a different... I actually, for the purpose of making these videos, I made a, I made a copy of an old request folder. So uh, there is also... Um, I talked in the first video about... Uh, some of the items here and um, and the fact that this server uh, uses some uh, some heavy uh, heavy stats uh, so just as you can see that I'm hitting the um, hitting, the, hitting the dummy here for like 18 million so we use some high numbers and uh, and that is fine we're in uh, the server is in in the process of uh, getting a new patch so that you can have um, uh, you can have, yeah, really, really big numbers. Uh, we're going from 32 bits to 64 bits. So that means we don't really have any, you know, reasonable limit uh, as to how hard we can hit and how rough we can make our, our weapons. As you can see, the base damage here is like 260,000 damage. So, uh, but the point is, uh, there is um, an XML file that you can put in your request folder which will stretch these um, these description windows a little bit because they were not installed when I made my first video so now you can actually see the stats properly um, uh, so um, yeah as you can see here some of the some of the high-end items really adds uh, a ton of stats so um, so I just wanted to mention these two things um, and then um, let's move on to making custom spells. Um, the custom spells you can start making by tier 
um, well, like uh, when you get to Kassik Tool and uh, Arthicrex, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, there are several ways of acquiring spells for your classes in, in, on easy server. Um, one of the ways of doing it is actually just going around killing the killing the, 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 the NPCs in the zone, the bosses in the zone, the named spawns and all that. And they may sometimes drop uh, a spell for you, which uh, will be a spell that is ready to be to be scribed in the spellbook. Um, so that is one way of acquiring them, but it's not always feasible because, you know, you may want to have like a certain mage spell from a certain uh, zone and um, it may be a rare drop. Uh, so you can also create these spells. Um, uh, and that is what I was planning on showing you now before I introduce you to uh, tier 5, which is um, the Abyss. So there are a few things you need to be uh, aware of when you uh, don't want to go on about the normal way, killing the mobs and looting the, the spells when they drop. But if you want to make these spells, uh, there are a few things that you uh, need to know about. Uh, so if you, I'm going into to our wiki now. And uh, in our wiki we have um, recipes here for how to make all the spells. Uh, at least up until um, uh, well, we have recipes for all the all the instances, all the zones. But there are some like uh, like when you get to tier ten, uh, you know you you'll find different tables for for them as well as some changes when you get to sleeper's tomb and so on in invasion's peak. So um, yeah. I'll just say it now, it is a bit messy this, because, you know, we've had several different ways of acquiring spells and they've changed over the time, but um, what you need to know is for, um, uh, for uh, the first, for like, let me see here, I think it was, yeah, from Castic Tool, which is the zone that I introduced in the last video and, and, um, all the way up to Old Commons, which is the Tier 9 zone. Uh, you will be able to uh, follow this recipe list uh, to create spells. And um, you will need a few things, which is also described here. So, uh, if you see in game here, uh, I'm currently standing in Nexus uh, with the Element Focus Vendor. And uh, if you open up the Merchant window there, uh, you can see that he's selling uh, the elemental focus in, in the different elements here. So basically, these are uh, the ones that you need when you are making spells. Um, so as we can see here, um, let's take this for example, the bard, uh, a bard song called Chorus of the Risen. Uh, uh, it drops in the abyss. Uh, it may be a rare drop, uh, so uh, it's not necessarily a spell that you will get, um, you know, after a few minutes or even hours after playing. So, so the the ability to to actually create these spells uh, by uh, getting some components is actually quite useful. Um, so, as you can see here, uh, up here, you will need the vellum. Vellum, that is something that drops or can be bought in our different tiers, in our different zones. Uh, and they are actually, if you are a new player, they are actually quite expensive, uh, these Vellums. So you may want to farm them uh, from the mobs in the zone. Um, it's been so long since I did this. I'm not sure how, how rare. I mean, I know some of the zones drop these pretty, pretty commonly. Uh, but uh, as you know, you can buy these if you if you have the money for it, uh, or you can farm them in, in the zone you're in. So when you are in in, um, for instance, in Cuvic, uh, uh, you'll be able to buy the Cuvic uh, vellum, which is needed to make the spells of Cuvic. Uh, today we're going to focus on the abyss. So let's just focus on making uh, the spell here. Uh, Chorus of the Risen, um, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, let's just jump back into the game. Uh, we needed to uh, go to the Elemental Focus Vendor and we needed to buy 
uh, wholly with the right research element. So we have to buy this. One of these will do. I think I already have one. Yeah, I have five. So we need one of these wholly. Uh, that is the main uh, first thing you need to do. And then you need to buy your class ink. So if you're making a... Let me just explain this for a bit. Um, just open up my vendor here. Uh, the class ink, uh, you may have to... Uh, you may have to uncheck this. Right now it only shows items that I can use. Uh, I always leave this unchecked because they, there may be some items that you, you would want to buy that, you, that won't show up. Um, so we are making a bard spell, a tier 5 uh, bard spell from the Abyss. So you buy this bard ink here. Uh, it's, you can just buy one if you're making one spell. They don't cost anything so you might as well stack them up. Uh, like I did here. Uh, so once you bought the, um, once you bought the, um, the elemental focus and you've bought the bard ink, then you need to go to the abyss, uh, which is the tier five zone. And uh, well, we can just do that real quick. Um, see here. And uh, once you're in this zone, uh, you will have the option to either farm uh, for these uh, vellums or you can buy them off the quest vendor in here. Uh, if I can get a little bit closer. So as you can see here, this vendor sells these uh, vellums and you know, they cost like half a million almost platinum here. So depending on how much money you have, you may want to farm for them um, instead of buying them. But the option is there to buy them, so so um, that is what I did for the purpose of this video. So um, let me just take one of these vellums, one bard ink, and the holy focus here, elemental focus here. And when you click combine in the for them uh, in in the magic box here, you'll get the spell. Uh, this spell is no trade, so make sure that you use your bard to make the bard spell. <laughs> and, you know, use the appropriate class that you actually want to use the spell to make the spell, because you cannot trade these. So I just made it now just to show you how it works. Uh, and this is basically uh, one of the ways that you can buy, uh, I mean make spells. Uh, custom spells on this server. Uh, when you get to the higher tiers, uh, there will be some changes, but you know for starters this will uh, help you out a lot so uh, Here you can just follow this list and uh, and um, uh, You can follow the drop locations. So like if you when whenever you get to tier 5 and you're in abyss uh, You can uh, check this list out and uh, and uh, make whatever you want sometimes You'll need both holy and nature says here like you need two different elements so so that would just put in um a holy and uh and the nature where's the nature even uh, yeah well you get the point you get the point so sometimes there it is obviously uh so sometimes you have to combine two of these elemental focuses to to make the spell so just follow the spell list it's uh it's actually not too hard to do this and um and it is really useful because you can go through uh some of the zones you can go through the entire zone uh, you know, uh, equipping your characters with the items and stuff that you need in there and you'll still end up not having all the spells that you would want to have on your different classes. So so then just make sure that you, uh, whenever you uh, fight in, uh, in any of the zones, make sure that you uh, keep these and th they are no trade. So uh, obviously collecting them for my warrior would be a waste of time because my war warrior doesn't have any spells. But make sure that your uh, the classes you have that can cast spells uh, keep a stack of, of, of the vellums uh, if you lose them, um, so that you can um, make the spells uh, like the way I showed you now, instead of uh, you know hoping for the bosses to drop them, which they will obviously do. But you know you have no control in in whatever spell they will drop, and you know. If you have some bad RNG, you can, you know, it, it can take a long time before you get what you want. So, um, that is a quick intro to how to make spells on the server. 
so you can see here we have a lot of uh, a lot of spells and 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 also a lot of these spells uh, may not be very useful to you um, and some of them may be so um, I'm not going to go through the entire list right now uh, and tell you all about which spells will be really useful but uh, I plan on doing that in another video uh, I plan on going through the you know the most useful spells on the server for different tiers and stuff so but that will be featured in um, in a different video um, as you can see here the higher up you get in, in the tiers uh, you may need to buy some some additional stuff like the expensive blue diamonds which costs quite a bit of money and you have to combine that as well in the magic box along with the with the focus element and uh, and the ink and also the vellum which is also needed so uh, yeah i think that is uh, that is it for the custom spells um yeah um like i said there are some changes when you get to higher tiers like sleeper's tomb that uh, don't use the spell vellums like like the previous tiers uh but but you know you can find a find a link to those recipes uh if you follow follow the links uh on the wiki here as well so yeah um, that is it for the spell research, and uh, and now let's move over to this tier. So uh, this is tier five, and uh, this tier is called the Abyss. <clears throat> it is um, well, there are many things you can say about this zone, um, both positive and negative, I guess, uh, and. Um, Personally speaking, this is, or well, it was uh, at least one of my favorite zones um, on the server because of uh, the variety actually in the zone. Um, so, um, but you know, there are a few things that are quite awkward in here and, and, and a bit tedious. Uh, and that is um, mainly uh, that some of these mobs that you need to kill in here are under the water. And they are rooted, so that means you cannot run around and pull these. I'll give you a few examples. Uh, here you have the corals. And they are rooted in place and uh, you have to swim around and kill them. Uh, and there are <laughs> quite a few of them around the zone. And uh, progressing uh, on in this zone, uh, it is actually mandatory to kill these uh, many times, actually, uh, for different purposes, which I'll get back to in a bit. Um, so, you know, that is a bit tedious, but uh, what this zone has is over 100 different uh, bosses that you need to kill. Uh, some of them have uh, quite, actually, quite quite cool names and uh, and appearances so uh, let me get back to um, get back to the zone entrance here first and I'll uh, start letting you know what this zone is all about um, when you first get in here uh, you need to go over here to the quest merchant the the merchant called greetings and you have to make sure that all your tunes are uh, are, are you know targeting this guy and hailing him and accepting the quest uh, so when you have accepted the quest here uh, you will have a list of 100 mobs 100 boss names that it's like a kill list so you need to kill 100 bosses named spawns in here <laughs> so and that is a lot um, and it does take time uh, for, for many people this is uh, easy server's uh, hell zone, uh, so to speak. It's uh, it's probably the zone if you don't count uh, tier ten. It's probably the zone that should take the longest time to complete. Uh, but you will have a lot of fun along the way. Um, so when you've accepted the the quest and the kill list quest for killing hundred bosses, uh, then you will have to figure out a few more things to make your stay on the, in this zone uh, a bit easier and uh, more manageable. So first off, I would recommend you go back to um, to the wiki and it has some pictures and a lot of explanations for um, 
for the zone and the first thing that I would do if I were you uh, would be to find your map of the abyss which is called Ilselin uh, 3 text and I you should open that text file and you should you know erase anything that's in there and copy this and paste these in and save it uh, the reason you want to do that is because whenever you have done that you can get in here and you can open up your map like I'm doing now and you will see I'm just gonna hide all the mobs in here map hide NPC and now you will see what you have just entered in the text document uh, uh, in, uh, for the for the map so basically what you have done is you have added uh, some useful information for the map um, to tell you a little bit about how to spawn the name bosses in here uh, so that is the first thing that I would do if uh, uh, when when starting this zone. Uh, let me get the mobs back here. So after you have done that, there is also another thing that you want to do, and you want to type slash highlight NPC. Uh, what that does is it makes all the spawns mm, pink or purple, and uh, and. I'll tell you in a little bit why that is a good idea. So uh, let's move on and uh, talk a little bit about how you spawn the bosses in here that you need to kill. Uh, so it's described pretty well here in the 100 boss list section. Uh, so basically some of the bosses that you need to kill um, will spawn when you have killed all the NPCs of one certain uh, type. So uh, let's move over here. We can see some uh, some mobs here that's called Alkari. There are quite a few Alkaris in this zone. Uh, I can show you uh, because you will manage the map. Uh, you, you will be, uh, you know, you don't have to. But if you learn to manage the map in here, it'll help you a lot. So if I type map hide NPC and then type map show Alkari, it'll show all the Akari spawns. And when you have killed all these Akari spawns, uh, it will spawn a boss that you need to kill for your quest. Uh, and um, there are, so that is one way of uh, spawning bosses. Also, you have the random one. So killing any of the type uh, specified uh, will have a chance to spawn a, a boss randomly in the zone. So that also goes for the Alkari along with all the other mob types in here. Uh, so kill, going around killing all these Akaris will have a chance to trigger another boss. It won't be the same type boss that you get when you kill all of these. But it, it'll be a, another boss entirely. So killing the Akaris will also have a chance to trigger a boss spawn uh, at random. And then you have a timed spawn. You have like, I don't know, I think it's 15... Uh, don't quote me on that, but around 15 uh, of the bosses uh, will spawn, uh, they, they will be timed spawns, so they will spawn every 30 minutes uh, in the zone. Uh, so some of the mobs on the kill list quest uh, will spawn like that, so, uh, so you will just have to pay attention to your map, and when you've been in the zone for 30 minutes, you may see some, see a boss spawn over here or here, or, um, yeah, you know, they have some random spawn points, these bosses that are timed. Uh, so that is the next to last. And then you have the trigger spawns. So uh, as you can see on my map here, uh, we have already added the trigger texts here. Uh, so let's take a look at one of these triggers. We can do the sea snake trigger. Uh, I'm not sure... Uh, I'm just gonna hide. Uh, I'm not sure that we will get a triggered spawn by killing this sea snake right now. But the idea is uh, you can use this map to uh, more easily navigate and figure out which um, which um, mobs you need to kill. Oh, here he's he's above me. So basically, killing this sea snake has a chance to trigger a chain, uh, which in the end might spawn a boss. So, uh, so as you can see, it's quite easy to find these trigger uh, mobs uh, when you have um, have edited the, the the text file for the map. So let me kill this one here, 
Okay, so now you can see a green coral spawned. Um, so then it's time to move over to the green coral spawn. Uh, but um, I was also going to... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do that afterwards. So, okay, then you kill the green coral spawn that just spawned by killing the sea snake trigger. You kill that one and you should have another spawn, the Alkari over here. And you can tell that this is a new spawn now because I have hidden all the other mobs on the map. There is another way of doing it. Uh, I'll show you uh, in a bit. Uh, I just uh, wanted to um, to kill this one first just to show you how these triggers work. Uh, since I was lucky enough to actually get one to trigger right now. Uh, let me just see if I can, uh, can move it, the pace a bit. Uh, let me see here. So he is... Wow. I haven't actually used the carpet in here before. Uh, back when I was playing in this zone, uh, I didn't have the magic carpet. So, <laughs> okay, so here we have it. Here is, no, yeah, it's this one. So this is the second trigger I had of killing the sea snake. So I'm going to move up here. Let's just remove my, just move the map a bit here. So we'll go for the Alkari here, kill him, and then... If you zoom out a bit, we have a boss mini. So that is how these uh, triggers work, uh, which is the last type of ways to, to, to get the bosses to spawn that you need to kill to, you know, complete the zone. Uh, it'll take a long time for you to do this, uh, but, you know, there is a lot of variance in this. There's a lot of different ways of killing fighting farming so uh, yeah so i think it's really fun you know but you know everything gets tedious when you do it uh, long enough or with enough characters so so well there is that but there are a lot of cool looking bosses in here that will spawn some are small like this one and some are a lot bigger so um, i'm not going to show uh, show you all of these bosses obviously that would take too long time but since we have a boss here, uh, let's just loot him and we'll see what he has. Um, like the previous tiers, uh, making your tier 5 armor will work the same way as the previous tiers. You have to, um, to make the tier 5 armor, you have to have the tier 4 armor that you got from Plane of Air. And you have to combine it in the magic box along with the new pattern that is meant for your class. Uh, so that is how you get these uh, new armor. Uh, also, some of these bosses in here will spawn, uh, will drop accessories uh, uh, like the earrings, belts, cloaks and stuff. So that they will drop that as well. Uh, so uh, uh, I didn't, uh, and you know, I don't think I covered the accessory items in the previous videos, but they will also drop these belts and cloaks and uh, shoulder items in, um, in, in the previous tiers as well, like in Plane of Dragons and in Plane of Air. Uh, so make sure you, you snag those as well, even though these accessory slots are not mandatory for, uh, for you know, ascending to the next tier. Uh, but the armor surely is, and also the epic weapons. Uh, so uh, that is another thing that... Uh, is important here in Abyss, and that is to complete your uh, your epic, uh, and it should be the epic 4.5 and 5.0. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 4.5 and uh, the 5.0. So basically, um, I told you about these corals. Um, I told you about these corals that. Uh, <laughs> that are spread around here in the water. You can see them down here. Uh, these corals, uh, you need to kill every one of them. Uh, let me see how many there are. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do that in a bit. It doesn't really matter too much. There are quite a few of them, maybe a hundred or more. Uh, I'm not sure this says here either. Anyways, um, uh, but um, when you kill all these corals, you will get a boss that spawns uh, and uh, when you kill that boss, it'll drop the epic 4.5 book. Uh, and uh, whenever you have completed the entire quest in this zone, 
whenever you have killed uh, all the bosses on your list, 100 of them, uh, at that point you will get the Epic 5.0 book, which you can turn, turn in for the Epic 5.0 augment that is needed to ascend to the next tier. Uh, along with the with the armor, obviously that you always need. Um, you don't need to you don't need to have both bracers really. You only need to have one of them. Uh, so so yeah, that is something that. But there is one thing that I wanted to show you. Uh, actually, I was was planning on showing you in the beginning, but I kind of forgot about it. But this is really important uh, because when you get into this zone, you may run around, you may kill stuff and have fun and. You know, you may you may not um, notice when you have triggered something, triggered a chain of uh, of mobs that will eventually spawn a boss, or maybe you you just you're not you you, you don't notice when the boss spawn. So uh, the the super tip here is whenever you get into the abyss, uh, and I would do this <clears throat> I would do this on more than one character. Uh, the reason I would do it, I would actually do it on all your characters. So you can do the BCAA command, <clears throat> and you can do um, highlight NPC. And when you do that, what it does is it makes all these. Um, actually, I showed you this already, didn't I? <laughs> well, anyways, uh, what I didn't tell you. Uh, so, so you now you can easily see when when the new uh, mob spawn because any new mob in this zone will be blue, uh, and it it'll you know shine out from these that are actually purple and pink. Uh, but what I didn't show uh, tell you was the idea of doing this on all your characters, and that can be quite useful because if you do the BCAA, you will broadcast to all your client windows um, to highlight NPC. And uh, if your main tank dies, uh, if you die, you will go back to where you're bound, and that would probably not be in this zone. So, you know, when you then zone back in here, uh, the mobs won't be highlighted anymore like it is now. So then it's a good thing if you have some of your other tunes uh, that are still in here, not dead. Uh, they may be able to, uh, you may be able to look at the, the map of their clients to you know, find the uh, find out what has spawned that you kind of missed uh, when you died, and um, and um, you know had to zone back in here. So um, I guess that covers uh, the abyss uh, in a, a quick manner. Anyway, uh, as soon as you have all your visible armor here and you have done the kill quest to get the epic 5.0. Then you can uh, hail your uh, fellow level of wench and she will let you know that you have ascended to the next level and can go to the next tier which is Anguish, tier 6. So um, we can just make a quick run around here, just see some of the, some of the zone from the inside here, so you can see... Um, it may not be the one of the you know reasons why this is uh, a little bit um ooh, greetings mope <laughs> uh, one of the reasons why this zone uh, uh, can be um, you know a bit awkward is because it's not that easy to navigate a lot of characters in here so you have uh, you have your uh, army of you know 10 20 characters you cannot expect to uh, to um, this won't be the best zone to run around in and and you know have all the character uh, all your characters follow you around um, just as you would like. But there is a stick command uh, uh, UW I think for underwater, which will actually improve your navigation with a stick command underwater. So uh, check out the stick commands as well when you're. Uh, you're in here to make sure that you know uh, the characters are uh, are following you underwater as, as best as possible and anyway uh, and uh, that'll especially be useful when you run around kill and kill these corals they can be a real pain there is no there's no hiding that fact they can be a real pain to you know just swim around here and and kill all of those but it has to be done and uh, and even though it's a bit tedious it is also uh, 
different from anything else you would uh, you know experience on on the server both before and 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 after the zone really so uh, I think yeah you can see that I have levitate on uh, so yeah that is also a pro tip oh is this mope mm. he's an imp let's see how he does oh he's he's going in there <laughs> hello mope um yeah maybe a shout out to the solo squad is due anyway uh, uh i think mope and a few others are actually uh um, focusing on playing just one character uh, to see how far they will go and uh and they'll team up with each other and uh, you know uh, it looks like they're having fun so yeah uh, but anyways this that'll conclude uh, this part uh, we will uh, end it here and we will uh, go to the next here which is anguish uh, so uh, I think I'll do that in a new video so uh, stay tuned for the next video and for the next year uh, have a good uh, day, everyone.